Hello there, I'm Evan Cole, and today I'm bringing you an old format match between me and my friend Scott. I am on the right, Scott is on the left. We will be playing a 2006 match between Ludicargo, which is what I am playing, and Rocklock for Scott. Deck list will be in the description, and so let's just jump right into it here. This is my first time doing commentary, at least uh, post-production or recording matches at all. Um, there was one time at Fortin Regionals in 2017, I did some commentary for an old format match that was going on exhibition with Jimmy Ballard, and I forget who he was playing. But so this, otherwise, this will be my first time commentating. So let's see how this goes. It's been a while since I've watched this match. I forget most of it. It looks like I went first, which happens just about every time Scott and I play. So looking at my hand here, let's see, we got a water, a battle frontier, a mag cargo, a warp point. I believe that's a rare candy and a Ludicolo. So, seems like, yeah, the best play. Gotta get the Battle Frontier up as soon as possible. Rock Lock, based on Dark Tyranitar and Dark Ampharos, it heavily relies on bodies to be able to accomplish its goals. And, let's see, so Scott plays Rock Sadman right away. I, sh I showed Scott my hand because it was trash. I'm not quite sure if I agree with that. Looking at the rest of Scott's hand, there wasn't a ton that could have happened. I, I think it would have been nice to draw you first, see if you can get potential rare candy to a Mareep, or possibly get a Lanette, something along those lines, be able to start setting up more. But an admin is okay too, because the rest of the hand wasn't doing a ton, and then after that you can still use Dorachi and get the full effect of Wishing Star. All right. So a little bit about the decks. Rocklock decides Brocklock is based on Ampharos, Dark Ampharos, which um, every time that an opponent evolves a Pokemon, that Pokemon takes two damage counters. And then Dark Tyranitar, whenever it's active, uh, it puts one damage counter on all benched opponents' Pokemon. All opponents' benched basics. There we go. All right, so Scott uses Wishing Star here. Two rare candies, a Verse Seeker, and Mary Ape. It definitely looks like rare candy is what Scott needs to take here. Rare candy into Dark Tyranitar turn one is a great play. Um, yeah, I see no, nothing else that's worth doing outside of rare candy. So right now, Dark Tyranitar won't be doing a ton. If we look at my hand over here, we definitely see a Hall and Mentor, a Low Tad, Battle Frontier, Water, Transceiver, and a Rhydon. So after Scott evolves into Tyranitar, I don't see anything else that can be done, so I'll probably just pass. Coming into me, I'm probably going to evolve into that Rhydon immediately and then play Mentor. Mentor will be awesome. I already have a Low Tad in hand, so I think I can get... Let's see here. Probably get another low tad. Let's see the draw real quick. Warp point. So yeah. Right on. Low tad. And then mentor. I think I take that back. I think I play transceiver first. Um, yeah. So I'm going to transceiver for a mentor and then discard the other mentor with that one mentor because at this point I won't need them anymore. If I do need them, I'll just use transceiver. And it thins my deck a little bit. So get the mentor off the transceiver. Play the mentor. Discard mentor. So I have a couple options now. Um, I'm for sure going to get a Slugma, and I'm probably going to get a Lotad. And then the third Pokemon is difficult. I could go for a Jirachi, which could be which could be helpful into Wishing Star. I especially have the Warp Point in hand. I could Warp Point out right on, go into a Jirachi, and start playing that way. Although the problem with that is that then... Actually, never mind, because Battle Frontier is still on the field. I think the other option that I think I do go for is a Holland's Cast Form. That one, I think, is probably a misplay. I think that's what I cho choose to go for, though. The idea behind Cast Form is that I can attach it to the Rhydon. That way I have an attacker prepared without having to use a double rainbow energy because I currently don't have any in my hand. And being able to get Rhydon attacking ASAP is pretty nice. The fighting weakness is good against Rock Lock. I believe Dark Tyranitar is grass weakness, at least the same damage one. But the grind Dark Tyranitar and Dark Ampharos both have fighting weakness. So Rhydon, not only is its body great, it prevents damage uh, to your bench Pokemon from attacks. So it doesn't quite stop, doesn't quite stop Dark Tyranitar's body, but it does stop the attacks of the other Dark Tyranitar, the one with Grind. Um, I believe Tailspin is the name of that attack. So passing on to Scott now, I hit with Horn Attack, going over to Scott. Scott immediately plays the Celio. Um, probably going to get a Pidgey. I didn't see if Scott top decked a rare candy or not. Pidgey would be gr good. Um, possibly a Jirachi, but I wouldn't think that. Okay, so it looks like Scott does have the rare candy in hand in order to pull a Dark Ampharos. So these are the two main Pokemon that the deck wants up. 
although Battle Frontier in play makes both the bodies moot, so it will be Scott won't be capitalizing as soon as possible. Rare Candy Dark Amphros is pretty good, although I think one thing to consider is that Ludicolo Ludicargo does run ATM Rock. So using all your rare candy like this can be risky because ATM Rock, Stone Generator, get them all down. So Drachi Wishing Star here. Let's see what we got. Nothing too terribly amazing. Probably gonna take the dark energy though. Uh, yep, there it is. Start attaching to that Dark Tyranitar being able to attack. Dark Tyranitar's attack is fighting in two colorless. So being able to get those two dark energy and get that extra damage going soon should be able to pretty pretty close to one-shotting everything. Not quite there yet though. Another option is to be able to attack, attach the dark energy, dark Ampharos, and then with, I believe Ram is the name of the attack. And then after weakness on Ludicolo, that would be dealing 80 damage, which is ooh, very close. So Scott flips tails on the sleep flip. Going back to my turn here, top deck Ludicolo, I believe I have a Lombre in hand, and I wanna say, oh no, I do not. That's a bad hand. Um, let's say Ludicolo, Water Energy, War Point, and it looks like another Battle Frontier, so I'm probably just going to attack and take my prize. There it is, and there's a Jirachi, that is huge. So, probably should have gotten Jirachi instead of Cast one before, but now we've got the Drachi here. Can bench it next turn and start using Wishing Star, which is wonderful. Going in, back into Scott, Scott draws the POW, which is not good. Um, Scott is missing the one energy needed to be able to start attacking with Dark, with Dark Tyranitar. So at the same time, okay. So instead of actually pulling up Slegma, uh, Scott is going to POW the Cast one to Slegma. So that is an interesting play. Um, it does get the energy off, although I will say that like the it's not bad i don't know if i would use the pal so early though personally um this is a very back and forth match and concerning i took the first prize i'm probably gonna be up in prizes the entire game and rock lock does like to do does like to have plays where it takes multiple knockouts at once anyway scott's going to copycat top deck the pidgey and then mostly supporters in their stands just bench pidgey and pass no energy all right so i draw another ludicolo which means I'm definitely going to bench this Jirachi, War Point into it. There we go. Probably going to pull up a Pidgey here. All right, let's see what I got for the Wishing Star. So right now, I think I definitely have the better board. Um, let's see here. That Lombre is very nice. I will probably take that. Although the Mad Cargo is also wonderful too, so I wouldn't be surprised. If I get the Mad Cargo, yep, then I can immediately smooth over, and then next turn, I can get whatever card I'd like to top deck. Most likely a Lombre or a Draw Supporter. Um, Rare Candy is risky because Rock Lock does run a whopping three ATM Rock. There we go. Okay, so Lombre I think is a better play, especially because I do have two, Lodico two Ludicolo in my hand. Another option could have gone, if I did go for the Rare Candy, it could have Rare Candied into Ludicolo, and then you smooth over for Lombre and draw the Lombre off of Swinging Steps with Ludicolo, evolve in the, Lod evolve in the Lombre with the other Lotad, and... I think I would be a little bit ahead in tempo in this play, but then it leaves me a lot more vulnerable to ATM Rock. It's going to attach here and probably just pass. There we go. Back on the Scott, what is the draw? Desert Ruins, that is awesome actually. So Desert Ruins, then probably going to go straight into a Steven. There it is, draw five. That is very good play from Scott. Looking at here, the counter, uh, sorry, the scramble energy is really good. Um, protective Orb is nice too, be able to attach that to the Ampharos, so that way it's a little bit more robust to ride on. This is a very good draw from Scott actually. Drop the Pidgey, drop the Protective Orb. I would, ooh, actually, no, okay, Pidgey has Free Retreat, so that should be fine with Scott. So probably gonna retreat into, whoa. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Pidgey does not have Free Retreat. Um, that is, that sucks. In that case, I probably would not have played the Desert Ruins at all. There was really nothing that could be done. Yeah, there would have been, there would have been 20 damage from Ampharos if I hadn't had the Battle Frontier, but it's not like I was going to admin. Either way, draw, play the Battle Frontier. Now it's back to my turn. I'm using Smooth Over right now. Most likely going to get another Lombre, I think, due to my hand. My hand is only two Ludicolo. That's the only thing in my hand. So I can get the smooth over. I can actually Wishing Star into Lombre. 
And that's probably what I'm going to do right now. Let's see here. Yep, Wishing Star. Look at the top five, because why not? Get Lombre. I'm going to shuffle again. And so now I am getting ready next turn. I'm going to swing through. So these decks are getting set up a little bit slower than they normally would. Um, I think a big part of that is the matchup because Rock Lock does use three ATM Rock. Ludicargo does not really want to use Rare Candy unless it's absolutely necessary. The matchup's so slow that it's not... Battle Frontier really carries Ludicargo is what I'm going to say. In this matchup, if Ludicargo did not have Battle Frontier, um, it would probably just get smacked. So drawing into Scott now, draws the Versus Seeker. Looking at the hand again, this is bad. Um, I have a two card hand, so can't use copycat. Can't get Stevens because the hand is too big. Probably gonna get an admin actually. No, getting the Stevens, perhaps I'm wrong about the hand size here. Let's see, that looks like, oh, I guess that's seven actually. Now I do remember at this point, there are two different prints of Stevens. Uh, there's one in Hidden Legends and one in Power Keepers. Hidden Legends is the one that is legal in 2006, and it is the copy that I do run in my deck. All of my decks run the uh, era-specific cards. I run the same set symbol and everything like that. Hidden Legends Stevens says if you have seven or more cards, if you have more than seven cards, actually. Um, so that means that since Scott had exactly seven Scott was allowed to use Stevens and draw a whopping five more cards. Very big tan size. When Power Keepers came out, they changed Stevens so that you ha if you had seven or more, so including seven cards in your hand, you could not use Stevens. So Scott with the draw here has to use a dark energy in order to retreat the Pidgey. So it looks like I was wrong about the free retreat. Look at the rest of the hand here. But again, a lot of supporters. Um, that's not allowed, actually. Scott, I'm going to pick that up real quick. There we go. ATM Rock can only be attached to Evolve non-EX Pokemon, which is very important. Um, yep, Scott's going to discard the Dark Energy. And the problem with this is that, yeah, Scott's going to the ATM Rock. So Sand Damage will start with this Desert Ruins being in play, which means that every single one of my Pokemon is going to take 10 damage in between turns right now. There they are. So this is what Rock Lock's goal is. It's supposed to make sure there's not a Battle Frontier in play, and then once that happens, you devolve your opponent's Pokemon, so that way they take damage from Sand Damage. Then when your opponent evolves those Pokemon, they take 20 more from Ampharos, and then from there you just keep spreading damage like that until you can uh, one-shot everything. It's a very cool strategy, I like it a lot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to evolve into Mad Cargo, which means I will take the 20 from that, I'm going to smooth over for what I presume to be a Battle Frontier, I didn't see it because it was so fast. Wishing Star, get the Battle Frontier in hand. I'm going to shuffle the deck again. Once I play a Battle Frontier, then I can re-evolve all my Pokemon, and it will be only my cargo that took that 20 from Ampharos. So again, this shows just how powerful of a card Battle Frontier is in general and specifically in this matchup. It was a card that kept Rock Lock in check when it first came out in Emerald. Before Emerald came out, Rock Lock was the de facto best deck in the format. There really was nothing else I could compete with it. Once Battle Frontier came out, it... Almost killed Rock Lock, I would say. I think the combination of Battle Frontier and Metacham EX. Although Metacham is not as prominent in 2006 as it was in 2005, and that means that Rock Lock is able to see a bit more success. So, just evolve all my Pokemon, Foot for Wishing Star, and it's back to Scott. Nothing else I can really do. Now it's Scott's turn, possibly get the swing. Going to drop the Larvitar, play a Lynette, probably get... I believe Fire Larvitar is already in play. So, what could be left is a Fighting Tyranitar, a Jirachi perhaps... There's not a ton that can be got, gotten from this Lynette right now, which is fine. Scott's board is finally starting to get set up. Those two Pidgeys are a bit of a burden, though, because you can only use Pidgeot's body. Pokebot, Poke Power once per turn, and it's not like I'm going to be targeting the bench anytime soon. In fact, Ludicargo wants every bench to be as full as possible. Circular steps, 10 damage for each Pokemon in play, excluding Ludicolo, so a maximum of 110 damage for three energy. That means that if Scott keeps the board large, that means that I am more likely to be able to swing for very powerful attacks. So keep Lynette back on the field. That is a very bad habit that is picked up from playing current formats. Supporters are supposed to remain in play during the entirety of a player's turn after they play it. Scott has a double rainbow and finally be able to start attacking. Second strike will not actually one-shot Jirachi. Actually, no, I am wrong. So, yes, okay. Second strike does 50, and then two up the dark is plus 20. Double rainbow is minus 10. That's 60. So now again, Ludicolo, finally, double Ludicolo, 
it's getting pretty heavy in here. Have the double rainbow in my hand. I'm considering attaching it to Ludicolo. Could also use smooth over and circular steps here. I do have an option to get not only any card in my deck, which I'm doing right now, I'll get to draw an additional card with the second circular steps. My options here, I could set up a second my cargo. It looks like I'm opting to draw cards instead, so I'm going to get a Holland Scientist off the smooth over. I'm going to draw it with the first circular steps. And then, not sorry, circular steps, uh, swing step. There we go. Swing dance. <laughs> Swing Dance will draw the Holland Scientist, and then from there I can Swing Dance again for another card. Hopefully it's a card that I'm willing to discard because right now, let's see, so Scott's gonna cut the deck, use my first Swing Dance. There we go. So now I'm gonna draw Swing Dance. All right, Swing Dance again. Holland Adventure, perfect. Discard the Adventure, draw, I believe it's gonna be five, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes. So Scott has a nine card hand, and now I do too. A lot of good cards being drawn here. Going to bench the Rhyhorn. In retrospect, I'm not quite sure if that was quite necessary. Um, that is a, right on is nice. I don't think I need to in this matchup, especially when I am so far ahead in tempo. Attached the double rainbow to Ludicolo. Probably could have uh, attached it before using Holland Scientist, but it happens. Looking at the rest of my hand here, we got a couple energy, some supporters, got a rare candy, transceiver. Not much I can do anymore right now. It looks like my plan is going to be the circular steps, which will be hitting for, it appears to be one, 90 damage. Let's see here, six on Scott's, 10 on mine, minus 10 for double rainbow. Should be 90 damage. If you don't notice, I was wearing a suit today uh, when we recorded this. Something's wrong. Uh-oh, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 Pokemon, minus 10 for the double rainbow, that should say 90 on the Dark Tyranitar. Sometimes you make small mistakes when you play old format, especially because how casual format it is, it happens. Scott right now going to evolve into two Dark Pupitar, attach the Scramble to Dark Pupitar, and then Celio, most likely going to get that Pidgeot, finally, it has been so long since those Pidgeys have been but no, it looks like Scott actually prized both Pidgeot. And that is why we have not seen one yet. That is a massive revelation. I don't know if this is the first time Scott has recognized the loss of Pidgeot. But looking at the deck now, things are not good for Scott. Pidgeot is such an important card in consistency, especially in stage two decks. The only reason why Ludicargo doesn't run is because obviously the combination of Smooth Over and Swing Dance is basically the same as Pidgeot. And you get the benefit of having wonderful attackers either way. The only problem with uh, Ludicargo, in my opinion, is that it runs Deoxys Pokemon and Rev Deoxys cards warp terribly. <laughs> so going back to Scott's turn now, Looking at the hand, not a ton that can be done. Can't really save this Dark Tyranitar either. Retreating would take out the Double Rainbow and a Dark Energy. So probably just going to second strike here, 470. And oof. no, that's going to be 60. I already had 10 on it from before. Looking at my own hand now. Things starting to get a little bit better. It looks like I'm probably going to attach the Scramble Energy to the Bench Ludico Ludicolo. Have the Transceiver in hand. Not quite sure what cards I actually want from it, though. My hand's looking pretty decent right now. Um, I could see wanting another ride on. I probably should get a, ooh, I cannot do that. I believe Scramble Energy can only be attached to evolved non-EX Pokemon. So, okay, get the ride on, then I should attach a Scramble. So nothing major happening there. I'll tell you what, I've been playing old format for two years now and I still make silly mistakes about rules and games. You get so in the moment, and there's so many little intricacies here. Very curious what Scott and I are talking about. Those are very, uh, very expressive hands. <laughs> All right, so get the ride on. Now, the only problem really at this point for me is that I don't have a six Pokemon on the bench. That would probably be the most ideal, but in the meantime, I still have great card advantage. Uh, my board is looking a lot better than Scott's. The loss of the Pidgeot really hurts, especially with those with the Pidgey and the Pidgeotto taking up that bench space, really limiting Scott here. And it looks like Scott is going to have to ride off the tails of Dark Tyranitar on the bench. That Pupitar with the Scramble on it, probably going to become a Dark Tyranitar with Grind, not necessarily one with um, Sand Damage. Looks like I'm gonna Celio for Lotad. 
And I think I'm going to go for a Happy Dance Ludicolo here, which is the other Ludicolo from Deoxys. How do I plan on doing that? Looks like I'm gonna, okay, Celio, and then I can smooth over. Um, yep, there we go, smooth over. Probably gonna get the other Ludicolo, there it is. Swing Dance to that Ludicolo. And then if I have the red candy in hand, I can just drop it right there, and I believe I do. This Ludicolo, I am much more willing to rare candy into, and also the deck actually only runs two Lombre from what I understand. If it is three, one of them is prized, but I know for a fact that there's not another Lombre in the deck. So candy into Ludicolo, go to Happy Dance, and get rid of one damage counter on each of my Pokemon. Very powerful, very powerful. So going to Swing Dance again and get the heal energy. And at this point, yeah, I think I'm just going to heal and take the knockout and co up five, four prizes to five in this game. 06 matches can get pretty darn grindy. I think this match is already hitting around the 20-minute mark, and we are just now getting things underway. One thing I like about the format, though, it's very nice casually. You can take your time in playing games, and there's so many intricate things going on that you really do need to take your time. Even right now, I'm really considering if there are any other cards I can play. Okay, so it actually looks like, instead of using circular steps, I'm using Ludicolo's first attack. I forget the name off the top of my head, but what it does is that it's one water for 30, I can discard as many cards as I like from my hand. For each card I discard, I heal 10. So it looks like I discard two cards. And that is a bad idea because Scott can immediately get a Dark Tyranitar. There it is. The Celio for the Dark Tyranitar with sand damage. And then second strike will just deal 70. So I really should have healed for either two more. So discarded two more cards in my hand or just not, not done anything at all. That was a misplay on my part. Um... I'm not quite sure what I was even thinking there because, ooh. although the problem now is that I would not have been able to use that healing attack in the first place because of the messed up damage counters on that Dark Tyranitar. So it looks like the ultimate consequence of that mistake is that I just had two cards randomly discarded from my hand because if I couldn't knock it out, it would just use circular steps and then I would have been one shot by the Dark Tyranitar anyway. Looks like Scott going to be attaching to the Dark Pupitar on the bench. Looks like another Scramble Energy, perhaps. Let's see here. Really considering it. That's just Dark Energy. Okay. So with this Dark Tyranitar in the active, the only one, the only Dark Tyranitar left in the deck is the one with Grind. Scott going to draw the second prize card, and that is a haw. That's a Desert Ruins. Two Pidgeot are still in the prizes for Scott. Coming back into my turn now. Now it's four prizes to four prizes. I'm going to top deck the Solid Rage card that's not terribly useful in a non-EX matchup like this. Look at the rest of my hand here. Um, it's not great. Not a whole lot I can do. Hmm. Let's see here. I can smooth over for a double rainbow and then swing step for it, which might be the play I end up doing. Ride on isn't a terrible move, but I feel like I'd rather have the double rainbow. Again, one other thing I need to do, there's the double rainbow. One other thing I need to do is to get a six Pokemon on my bench. Really need to ensure that I can be dealing the maximum amount of damage I can. With that double rainbow, I actually cannot one shot that Dark Tyranitar or any of them, which I think shows just how balanced of a card Dark Rainbow Double Rainbow is. It's a great card. I love it. It's still powerful, but it's not overpowered. So I'm going to smooth over for it. Swing Dance with the Double Rainbow. Attach it to Ludicolo. Ooh, that camera right there really shows off the beauty of Reverse Hollow Double Rainbow from EX Emerald. One of my favorite Reverse Hollows ever. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it. I have a play set in my Ludicargo. It is wonderful. So now, Circular Steps will be dealing. Let's see what we got here. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 minus 1. So I should be doing 90 to this Dark Tyranitar. Let's see if I catch the mistake. Ooh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 minus 10 is 90. Again, Circular Steps does not actually include Ludicolo itself. So the maximum amount that can be done by base damage is going to be 110 for 11 other Pokemon in play. I only have 10 Pokemon in play, and subtracting 10 from the double rainbow, 
or sorry, 10 of those in place, track 10 of Dumbo Rainbow, only doing nine. Looks like I'm going to Verse Seeker for Celio, going to Celio for that right on, get that down into play. Again, also this entire time, that scramble was not supposed to be on the right on, but a little mistakes, as we said before. We'd like to record some more matches right now. Uh, we recorded three matches in this session. We recorded Ludicargo versus Rocklock right now. And then we also recorded Dragtrode versus Meta Knight in 2006. And we also recorded LBS versus Mutrick in 2006. Both awesome, iconic matchups. Looks like we still did not understand the mistake with Circular Steps. Still dealing 100 to that Dark Tyranitar when it should be 90. Scott with the Desert Ruins going to knock off that Battle Frontier. And this is when I have the realization that I have prized a Battle Frontier. Which means that until I draw it, Scott will have free reign of Pokebodies for the rest of the game. Which means that things are actually about to start happening. And that's where this game is going to start getting grindy. I'd say up until this point, I had a very large chance of winning the game. But right now, things have changed. Scott with the ATM Rock and the Rocket Sadman going to get both of our hands down to four cards. When Stone Generator is used, all my Pokemon will be devolved. And it looks like, yes, all of them on the bench will take 10 from Sand Damage. And when I evolve into them, they will take 20 from Dark Ampharos. That Ludicolo on the bench that can heal 10 from all my Pokemon is around with a rare candy. Meaning that I will need to find another rare candy if I would like to evolve into it. Uh, yep, that's a rare candy. It's a fourth card. I was just about to check on that. Looking at Scott over here, draws the grind, Dark Tyranitar. Also, it's a rare candy, Dark Ampharos. One card left in hand. This is a full board here. Going to Stone Generator, devolve all of my Pokemon. Sand damage will take effect. And this is when the true power of Rock Lock is starting to be seen. Rocklock's damage spreading is unlike anything else, and it is quite incredible just how quickly things can get out of hand by sand damage and the combination between it and Dark Ampharos' Pokebody. Go to draw here. Draw Rocket's Admin. Looking at the way to do this, looks like it's going to have to happen, is that I'm going to have to evolve into Mad Cargo, take the 20 from that, I'm going to use Smooth Over and then realize that I no longer have a Battle Frontier in play. So here it is now, going to look through, and it's not there. It's prized. So what do I get? This is a difficult question. I'm eyeing the ATM Rock, and that's not a bad play because both Ampharos's are rare candied, and that means that I will no longer have to deal with that body unless Scott gets another rare candy, which I believe would be, I believe Scott's already used three this game. So there'll be one more left. This Tyranitar in the active spot is evolved from a Dark Pupitar, though, so that will not be a major problem. Smooth over for the ATM Rock. Going to draw it with Swing Steps. Let's see what else we got here. I'm probably going to Rare Candy into Ludicolo. Take the 20. Happy Dance from all my Pokemon. Heal 10 from each. Neg negate that Sand Damage. Let's see here. I'm going to evolve into Rhydon. Um, that is iffy. I will say that. Um, I will say though, when I I just realized that when I devolve uh, Scott's Pokemon, the dark dark the dark Pupitar will go into the discard after it's knocked out because it has 100 damage on it. Should be 90, but 90 would still be enough to knock it out. So things are all right there. Deciding whether or not to evolve into the other Rhydon. It is a difficult question. It only has a water energy on it. I doubt it's going to be attacking at all, so I don't know if it's worth it. I don't think it really matters in the long run, but it looks like I'm going to refrain. Going to attach the heal to Ludicolo. Heal one, and now I'm going to use healing steps so that, boom, no damage left on Ludicolo. Going to attach ATM Rock. And going to use Stone Generator. So now Dark Pipitar is knocked out. Dark Tyranitar goes back to Scott's hand. And then the Dark Ampharoses and the Pidgeot and the Dark Tyranitar are also picked up, leaving 
to marry, which is very, very important. Scott going to promote the Dark Pupitar. Probably just going to evolve right back up into the other Dark Tyranitar. And I don't, I don't blame that strategy at all. Now, okay, Scott is going into the other Dark Tyranitar, which means this is probably... Nope, going to take that back. I'm not sure actually if I agree with that, though. Um, Scott only has one more ATM rock in play, meaning that sand damage won't be terribly crucial anymore. And Scott only has one more rare candy left, which going to quick search for that right now, which means that Scott can get the one Ampharos in play. But that means that I don't believe um, I don't believe Rock Lock has enough Pokemon recovery to be able to actually set up another Tyranitar. Personally, I would have gone for the Dark Tyranitar with Grind, been able to start grinding the game out a little bit. Three energy is what is needed for the other Dark Tyranitar that's currently in play to attack anyway, and that three damage could have been used to really start hitting with Grind. So I think that is a major misplay from Scott over here because as Scott rare candies into Dark Ampharos, there really is not much else that can be done on that side. Going to Steven for five, see what we get here. Two Lynette, ATM Rock, that is the last one. Incredible, Dark Flaffy two. This has been an amazing Steven. And that is one way Scott will get back into this here. So going to bench the Jirachi. Intriguing play. It just helps sweet. It just helps circular steps do more damage. Going to attach the ATM Rock here. Probably going to Stone Generator and make me start the process all over again. I believe I have one rare candy left that I can use for this Ludicolo. Ludicargo only runs three rare candy, which is fine because the deck doesn't need it terribly. Going to pick all this Pokemon up. Sand damage will deal one. Hope I remember to do that here. There we go. That Slugma has four damage on it, which is a little scary. Um, if it gets devolved one more time. Or heck, even when it becomes a Mag Cargo, it can be vulnerable to an attack from... I forget the name of the stadium. I think it's Rocket Secret Base. Rock, uh, Rock Lock wants a copy of it. It's a... One colorless energy, 20 sniped anything. So that would be enough to knock out the mag cargo. Going to smooth over probably for a rare candy here if it's in my deck. We'll see what it is. Rare candy into Ludicolo be the only way to save that mark. mag cargo from a snipe. But there aren't many cards left in my deck anyway. Resources are becoming very low. Resource management is an incredible skill to have, especially when playing 2006. It is a matches can get very grindy, very long. You need to make sure that you're playing cards exactly when you need to, and that is probably why a lot of people say that 2006 is the most skill-based format. Going to rare candy into Ludicolo here. Going to take another two, and then I believe I will healing steps. Heal ten to each of my Pokemon. Is it healing steps or healing dance? I don't quite remember anymore. <laughs> I think it might be Healing Dance. I tell you what, one thing I have not done in a while is research my cards. I am actually coming off about a two, three, three month, four month actually, four month hiatus in playing. So I'm a little rusty. Um, I'm still not 100% back yet. I still have a little bit of difficulty playing the game. It's just an apathy thing. I'm not quite sure what it is. I just, I think I got burned out. Um, but commentating this so far has been a lot of fun. It's great to be able to talk about the game in an analytical standpoint, seeing what I'm doing right or wrong or what Scott is doing right or wrong, how things can change. So going to use Healing Dance here. Looking back in my hand now, Solid Rage, a Slugma, a couple other cards I don't think matter that much. Looks like I'm going to be using Ludicolo's first attack here to heal 10, doing 20 to the Dark Tyranitar. And sand damage does nothing because I have only basics. Scott going to draw. Briny. Now, that's... Um, I don't think Briny is terribly useful. Should Would be able to pick up a Dark Tyranitar if it gets hit down a lot. Looking at the board here, well, we've got 10 other Pokemon in play. So, Circular Steps only doing 90. That could actually be very big, assuming that we remember that it should be only doing 90, because if it does 100, that is very scary. Scott going to Copycat for what it looks like. Four cards now. The deck is looking very thin. I believe the only thing that's really left in Scott's deck are Pokemon, which is not a good place to be at the end of the game. We'll see what we got here. Rock Lock does run four Jirachi, and if you don't draw him, that can suck. 
Going to copycat here for a heal, a Celio, a Briny, and a Jirachi. That heal is good. Um, we might have still been under the mindset that Circular Steps was dealing 100 damage, in which case it would have been amazing. Unfortunately, that's not the case. For me, I'm going to draw here. I'm going to immediately use Healing Dance. Try to get all the excess damage off. Look at my hand here. There's not really much I can do. This could be admin time. I'm not sure. I should definitely bench the Jirachi, though. Um, actually, maybe not. Maybe I should do Slugmas. So that way I can evolve into it. Low Tad's not a great idea. It's not terrible, but I don't think it's amazing. I believe the deck runs a Pokemon Retriever, and that's it for... He oh, no, no, no. Actually, Ludicargo does run a Holland Farmer, so that's okay. I will be able to get the Lombre and the Ludicar Ludicolo back from Holland Farmer. So going to play the admin here. I'm going to be drawing only three cards to Scott's four. This is when things get very, very, very risky, I think. Not necessarily risky. Um, things are starting to get very significant, though. Starting to get into crunch time here for both of us. If Scott's going to make the comeback, it's going to happen soon because right now I am still looking pretty well on the board. If I do end up losing this Ludicolo, it will be a pretty big blow, but ooh, let's see here. Pow, Celio, and Mag Cargo. That is not what I wanted. Maybe I should have benched that Slugma instead. Looks like I'm going to smooth over here. Look at my deck. It's mostly energy, which is good for me because that's the one resource I'm missing. Going to get the double rainbow. Off the smooth over here, looks like I'm probably going to attach it to the Rhydon on the bench. Hopefully the Rhydon that is closest to my discard pile. Swing Dance going to draw. Let's see how many cards in my deck now. I was not able to count it. Much less than, much more than Scott. Scott's deck is looking incredibly small. I believe I only saw four or five cards left in the deck. So I'm going to swing dance, just going to knock it out, and that is bad because I'm going to stop the game right here to look at this again. If we look, I should have one, two, three, four, five Pokemon on the bench, plus six on Scott's side. That is 100 damage before double rainbow. Scott had two damage on swing dance, the circular steps, only doing 90. That is an unfortunate way to end the match, I think. Um... It's been going so well. I'm a little embarrassed that I forgot that Circular Steps does not include Ludicolo, but unfortunately that's the way it happens. We're still going to try to finish out the game here. I believe at this point Scott was considering conceding anyway. Scott going to draw the double rainbow, attached to Ampharos, won't even be able to one-shot. Only having three cards left in the deck. Lana for Jirachi, leaving one card left. And Scott's just going to attack for 50 damage. And it looks like this game will be over here for the first ever old format video that is being commentated. I hope that my commentary was at least a little bearable. I think I, you know, I spoke a little too fast, but first time for everything. Let me know if you have any other questions. I will post the deck list in the description of the video. Um, feel free to comment or message me if you would like to learn more about old format. I have, or if you have any requests, I have a lot of decks. I have, I believe, 11 decks from the 2006 format, which is the one that you're currently watching right now. I also have a lot of decks from the 2010 Diamond and Pearl through Unleashed format. Um, I have a few decks from 2005, which is Ruby and Sapphire through Emerald. And then I have a couple decks from other formats as well. I have Diamond and Pearl through Rising Rivals. I have 2004, which is Expedition through Hidden Legends. Um, I've got a lot. I will leave a list somewhere in the description of all the decks that I have. If you'd like to see a matchup, I should be having LBS and Mewtrick matchup and the Drag Trode and Meta Knight matchup videos coming out sometime in the future. Looking at back at the end of this game now, going to Circular Steps. Again, for the wrong amount of damage. 110. Scott going to draw the last card in the deck. Going to Briny. Pick up that Dark Ampharos, leaving Scott with zero cards left in deck. This is going to be a deck out game. Attach that protective orb just in case. Why not? But that will be the end of it. So thank you for watching, and please 
let me know any suggestions to make my commentary better, to help improve it. I very much enjoyed watching this and recording it and making this video has been a lot of fun. I would love to do more in the future. So please let me know anything that you have to say. Thank you very much and have a great day.